Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Janelle Riley, and I am so, so happy um, to welcome you to the SEG AFTRA Foundation conversation with an actor and living legend, Michelle Yeoh. Um, this is someone who has literally and figuratively been kicking ass on screens since premiering as an action star in the 1980s and has gone on to star in such films as Crashing Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Memoirs of a Geisha, and a little movie from last year called Crazy Rich Asians. <laughs> um, please join me in welcoming Michelle Yeoh. <laughs> oh, <hi. laughs> Good afternoon. Oh. Oh, thank you. Thank you for making the time to be here this afternoon. Yes. Wow. Thank you so much for coming out. Um, this is an audience of SAG actors, as we were telling you. So I always Hello fellow SAG. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. I always like to start by asking, how did you get your SAG card? Because <laughs> you had been an actor for many years before you actually got, got a that SAG card. card? Yeah. yeah, I think it was Memoirs of a Geisha oh, really? before I actually got it. I only started getting my screeners like three years, three, four years ago. Oh, you're kidding. I was not <laughs> <laughs> What the hell, you know? <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. It's the truth. Because <laughs> uh, I guess all the movies that I did in, in Asia did not qualify me to be a SAG member. Right, but you have um, your own union, I presume? Maybe do we? not. No. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're working towards that yeah. very strongly, but ours is still not, not like here, where it, you know, we're proud to be SAG mm -hmm. members and we have all the different guilds and, and unions which protect our rights, which is necessary. Uh, when I first, yeah, it's, it's true. We have to look out for each other and watch each other's backs and, you know, be conscious about the working hours and all those kind of things because after 12 hours, we just don't look good anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a feeling you might. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. but like when I first started my career in, in Hong Kong, I mean, I remember one of my films, I was working seven days and nights. I never went home. Wow. And my choice was to have a shower. And luckily, one of the ADs lived pretty close to the, the where we were working on this like big pr uh, w site, you know, mm -hmm. construction site, or to have a nap for an hour in a van. Well, I mean, we didn't have wow. trailers or anything like that. I mean, I'm, but you know, Jackie Chan, Jet Li, we were all like huddling down side streets and things like that together. So it was kind of cool. I've she says, <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> but not ever doing that again. <laughs> I've actually always kind of wondered because you became very famous for doing your own stunts, and I always wondered, what, like, was that by your choice or did it be, you know, by necessity? No, it was definitely a choice okay. uh, because when I first went to to Hong Kong, I was very lucky to get into the the field. I mean, uh, literally, I was just dumped in the deep end, you know, swim or sink kind of thing didn't speak the language, didn't know how to read Chinese, and fortunately in those days, they never had scripts anyway. <laughs> 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 Everybody just sort of winged it. I mean, yeah. Baptism by fire, really. I mean, so it, was, it wasn't too scary because now here in, in America or in Europe, everybody's gone to film school. They're talking about these amazing, you know, like real directors and things. In Hong Kong, most of them, really never went to film school, mm -hmm. like Jackie or Sam -O. They just learned because they'd been in the business for so long. So, you know, you, you were not so intimidated by that. Um, and in the first movie that I did, Al versus Dumbo, they always used to come up with these uh, very quirky <laughs> names because <laughs> it was the comedies action movies that were instant hits always. So I was in a action comedy and of course I played the usual damsel in distress. All the women played the damsel in distress and all, ev all of us going, save me, Jackie, Jackie. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 uh, if I have to say that, I'm gonna shoot him, not me. <laughs> uh, and he knows it. Yeah. Um, so when I did after, but I was watching Samuel Ho, who is this incredible actor, director, stunt coordinator. I mean, they just wore all the hats. They wrote the, the screenplay, they, they did everything. And when I was watching him do the stunts, I was going, this is exactly like a dance piece, mm -hmm. like a musical, right? Everything is choreographed and then it's all about working it out with your partner or the people who you're fighting with. It's like a whole dance routine. So when it came to my second film, and fortunately, that was a, with my producers, and they were a fairly young uh, production company, um, and so they don't, didn't have 
so much to lose because you know there was Golden Harvest who had the Jackie Chan and all the big action heroes, and then there was uh, Cinema City who had all the, the comedians. So D and B was sort of like fitting in between. Who had signed on Sammo Hong as one of their lead uh, producers, directors, and I said I would really like to try you know some of that. And they went, they looked at me, go, oh God, beauty queen, long, I had long <laughs> hair, like the typical, you know, uh, Asian girl. Um, they went, okay, let's think on this. And fortunately, because I've come from a long history of ballet, I did a lot of sports as a child and still continue to do so. So I was quite active and physically, and I was, physically I was very fit. And also I learned to take directions very well um, with my body and um, so then they said okay we're gonna have make it a shot because nothing ventured nothing gained right if I didn't fit the box we couldn't get the people interested and we could just go back being the damsel in distress <laughs> 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 so that's why it was a choice I was yeah. like I'm not gonna fail at this um, but it was also a huge challenge for me at that time mm -hmm. because you really felt that you had to prove because it was so much a man's world at in that period of time because in the old days with Shaw Brothers we had a lot of women swords women warriors but then during the 80s it suddenly disappeared and went into all the guys doing all these like incredible stunts and action pieces um, so when I wanted to join that world, I felt I had, the pressure was to prove, first of all, you deserve a place to be there. Mm -hmm. And that every time someone hit you, you were not going to run to a corner and be like crying and like. <laughs> so I was very, very determined to prove that we girls could step up to the plate and do all that. Yeah. 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 Thank you. So it was a, a definite choice. Yeah. But then I also agreed, Corey Yoon, uh, was my first action director, and it was called Yes, Madam. Um, and I was playing a detective. So, you know, we, we wanted to, to put the story around where um, it was convincing that she had these skills, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it made sense without having to get too much into explaining why she is able to handle a gun, why she is able to, she's so adept with all these, like, you know, um, self. Uh, protective mm -hmm. uh, defense, defensive moves. Um, so when I went into training, I will never forget the first day when they came into this gym where I had been training for a while because I realized I had to be in tip top shape because I'd seen how these sun men uh, act on, because I was there in the first movie with Sammo Hong and I watched him do it and how their attitude, yeah. they were very, very like macho. When they did, after they did a stunt, you know, the, the general question is like, are you okay? It wasn't, are you okay? It was yeah. just like, are you okay? And the answer is always, I'm okay. You could be bleeding and like crawling <laughs> out. I'm okay. And I'm going like, wow, damn. You know, but they had that kind of like mental discipline mm -hmm. to, to them. So then um, I started training in this gym where I knew there were a lot of stunt men. Uh, at that time, there were not so many stunned women right, I'm sure. yet. There were a lot of action actors who would come and train there. It was like Donnie Yen was one of them, uh, Dick White was another one. So all these like much more experienced and uh, recognized actors. So then I would you know go up to them and say, "Hi, I'm new to this, and you know, would uh, can I work out with you guys and all that?" Because these are the masters. Then if you can learn from them, then you have first hand into it. Because at the end of the day, I didn't come from a formal training like Jet Li uh, and Donnie Yen where they were wushu masters, they were champions. I mean, they were world champions. Mm -hmm. And not like Jackie where he had spent his entire you know, young life um, being on stage uh, as a performer, as acrobats and all that. So that's why they are so skilled in what they do. I mean, I was, a da I was a dancer, I was a sports person, so I had to put the mind frame was transferring one kind of movement into another. It's like when you go into a drama, into a comedy, you know that, science of, that sense of timing has to, you have to alter it with, with each different thing. So then it was too late for me to learn from scratch. I, try, I, w I was thinking about like, learn Wing Chun, it was so boring. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every day, oh, 
huh? yeah. and so you wanted a, like a shortcut because you knew there were certain things you can bring to the table like I was very flexible. I mean, I could wrap my legs around where the boys would just go, ow, that looks so painful. <laughs> did, did that come from dancing? That came from okay. dancing. Like as a ballerina, for you to do kick backwards or put your <laughs> legs up, you know, around, it's, it's normal yeah. to be able to do it. But to be able to do it with the speed and the power, now that was the other mm -hmm. thing. Because with dance, it's always graceful, but not the <laughs> you know, that's the big, how do you, that scared me a little bit just now. No. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here, but still. <laughs> but this, these were little nuances that you learn as you mm -hmm. went. Because at the beginning of my career, I learned from them. I watched them, and I could imitate their moves. But the one thing that you had to, it had to come from you was that sense of power, you, where it came from. And you know, when you are a very good martial artist, it doesn't translate into being a good teacher. Sure. And even when you're, so when I did my first movie, I remember they all would just go, always say one word to me, power, power. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm going like through his stomach. What more power do you want? So it's not about how hard you hit them, but actually the speed of going and the point of retraction. Mm. That makes sense. And I'm sure if any of you have done action, you know what I'm, I'm saying. It's not really trying to kill that guy. It's actually trying to stop before you hit someone. So. Knock on wood, I have never, unless I've been told to take someone out, I've not actually <laughs> knocked someone out because the <laughs> respect you have to give to your son person or your actor is that you are conscious of the fact I'm not going to hit you by accident. So you have to be aware. It's like if we have a punch, punch up like this, I know the distance so mm -hmm. that I won't actually take you out or vice versa because that is, that is very, very dangerous. So there were so many things to learn, but um, one thing I am is I'm a pretty determined little kid. Yeah. Once I set my mind to it, and, and I learned that, you know, to, um, the guys won't take you seriously if you didn't take yourself right. seriously. And the first action sequence uh, uh, movie that we did was called Yes, Madam, where I played the detective. And I remember um, when we were re rehearsing, because there are no rehearsals. You're all dressed up, you walk onto the set, they choreograph the piece, you learn it, and you do it right away. Wow. So we, we have come through that kind of training. So it's like, I don't know what I would be doing. You know, I don't know if I'm like running up the wall or down the wall or how many people I'll be fighting with <coughs> until we are on the set. And then they go, okay, now, he, you're going to run next to the car, and then you'll whip your gun out and try and shoot the guy. So I did this, and all I heard was like, power, power. And I go, okay, power, tong, tong. <laughs> And then my director came up to me and said, Ai, you, you should be more clean, you know, because you're very, very dirty. So he took my hand up, and it was black, and he thought it was dirt, but it was from oh. bruising, from hitting the wow. window. But then I learned, like, the other day we were in Momi, uh, in New York with Ang Lee. He's like, yeah, I used to see these big bruises, and you never told me about them. I said, what's the point? Yeah. What's the point of telling you, right? We still have to get the movie done. <laughs> but one thing that you learn to do is you learn to protect yourself. Yes. And when you are good friends with the stunt uh, people, um, not th and they're very professional. They teach you, so you should always listen to them. They will teach you how to protect yourself. Because you know when you're doing an action sequence, it's not just doing one time. Just think of the number of times you have to do it. So if you're just doing like an arm-to-arm -arm combat, which you know the, 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 the Hong Kong film industry was just incredible at, uh, you're, you're, you're like having eight to 12 moves, just like <laughs> one time is eight to 12. Five times is how many times? And if you're not protected, if both yeah. of you are not protected, and just look at my little wrist. <laughs> and then I have to fight with these guys whose like, arms are like my legs, you know? So, so you have to be smart about it. It's not just about being brave or like macho with them, but to learn how to skirt. And I think because as I use the fact that I'm a woman and we decided from very early on that I would not like try and bulk up and look like I'm action ready. Right. Because I want to be, you know, like, the girl next door, and mm -hmm. then suddenly 
when push comes to shove, when I have to defend myself or defend someone that I love, then you just break into this like, <laughs> you're dead, man. <laughs> <laughs> now that, <laughs> for me, is like the element of surprise and you yeah. will get them. <laughs> Because you, did you ever int originally intend on being an actor? You wanted to do ballet, correct? I never intended to be an actor, actually. I mean, mm. when I was a kid, we used to, I loved the cinemas. My parents, they are very interesting, were a very interesting couple. My dad loved everything that to do with animals and Tarzan. Oh. So <laughs> all those like movies about the animal kingdom or Tarzan, my dad would take us to that. My mom was like the ro real romantic at heart and horror buff, so you know, I was traumatized oh as a really? kid watching like <laughs> Christopher Lee standing there with these like red eyes. <laughs> the and mom was the horror fan. Oh yeah, wow. so I am a horror fan too now. <laughs> Have you done uh, a horror movie? I'm trying to think. No, that I won't do. Really? Why yeah, not? Yeah, because that's, the, that's their domain. I don't want to cross over just in case they come and find me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't, you don't want to mess with that? I don't want to mess with that. I know exactly I what you I want to stay mean, right actually. here. Okay. Yeah, I love seeing horror movies, but I don't oh, want to. I love yeah. seeing horror movies. <laughs> uh, so as a child, I've watched, you know, in the silver screen, uh, like, you know, in those days where you have three hour movie and you have an interval in the middle. I mean, you don't get that now. But those, I loved yeah. the, the cinema. But I never ever thought, oh, one day I could be, I would be on the silver screen because I loved ballet too much. Mm -hmm. So that became my world. Um, and I remember when I was doing my degree in, in dance in England, I thought, well, I'll do a minor in drama, right? helps with body language and then I discovered I had stage fright when I had to speak really? so you don't know that I'm actually like sweating and my knees are still shaking even now yeah really? yeah so I find I try to find ways to thrive on that if I know I have to go on st like this is casual and fun and in interesting because I can go crazy and you would still laugh at me <laughs> <laughs> but you know if you were to go to I wouldn't do like a formal talk or something like yeah. that um, and I won't do theater. I discovered really? I was so terrified of theater. I would forget my lines. I forget my own name. <laughs> I was hopeless. So that that during that year, I was so traumatized uh, with uh, having drama as a minor, th wow. as a minor part of my degree. I would sky my lessons, and I, I'm sure if the lecturers at that time. If someone said to them, you know, one day Michelle is going to be an actress, they'll be like, <laughs> not this <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> it's definitely not this one. <laughs> when you competed in uh, the Miss Malaysia pageant, which you won, uh, by the way, Thank um, you to my mom. as though you didn't know, um, <laughs> what was your <laughs> Thank you. what was your talent portion then? Or, or we don't. You we don't didn't. do that because in Malaysia we're a Muslim country to start off with. So you know, all, like the costume side was all in clo uh, closed doors. So we didn't have a, t a talent show. Like we didn't have to do or sing or yeah. Do Fundamentally, you would end up being the ambassador, like the tourist ambassador for your country. So you would, and the year after I did that, I would go to the d different countries, um, talking about Malaysia, talking about the, and it was a very, very good experience, I must say. Um, so that was interesting, but it's thanks, thanks to my mom that I had to do it. Oh, really? She, yeah. she pushed you into my it? My mom really should be the movie star. Really? Oh, yeah. Even today, she, and she's like 80, almost 80. Like she walks into a room <laughs> and she's like waving and I go, mom, who are you waving at? <laughs> they know me. I'm like, really? And I'm going like, mom, come on, let's go, let's go. <laughs> and it is, uh, it, she's amazing. And she's sick. She's got such a beautiful voice, which I wish I had. It would be like, mom, sit down, please. It's not your wedding, okay? <laughs> uh, and she's gorgeous. So, really? So my well, mom decided that, you know, it was a good career move. She, oh, God. <laughs> But it, it was, I mean, uh, uh, correct me if I'm uh, wrong, is that how you met Jackie Chan? No, no, no. no okay. Actually, my career in the film business was, <laughs> it's really funny. Um, a very dear friend from Malaysia who was married to a banker was having dinner 
with my now ex-husband, Dixon Poon, who had started the, the new production company. Mm -hmm. And during dinner in Hong Kong, he was saying, oh, you know, I've signed on all like Jackie Chan, George Lam, Samuel Hong, Chow Yun Fat to do uh, these commercials because he was not only in the film business, but predominantly he was in the fashion business. And he was a very good entrepreneur. He knew the marketing side of him. He wanted the stars to wear his jewelry and his fashion. And that was how he was going to promote his labels. And so he had signed them on. And so he was saying, mm, I, and I haven't been able to match them with the right girl, my girlfriend. <gasps> <laughs> she digs in her wallet, I swear to God. She whips out my picture and she says, my friend, she's in Malaysia right now. She's Miss Malaysia. And so Dixon looks at the picture and goes, oh, well, ask if she's interested to come over and uh, maybe we can meet and see if we can do a commercial with her. Wow. So I get this frantic phone call. I was in KL. She said, can you pass my car? Come over here. Come <laughs> over. Don't call anyone to you. And I'm like, slow down. What, you will? what am I doing? No clue what I was going to do. Knew I was going to meet my girlfriend. Got my passport. Went there the next day met Dixon in the afternoon and I was yeah, and then we shot uh, the next day and he says oh you're going to uh, film with uh, Sing Long and so he brought his like uh, producers John Sham you know the, the comedian director actor so um, and this was all a blur oh you're going to film with Sing Long okay fine very well known actor okay fine so I'm sitting there doing having my hair and makeup done and I see this guy like walking across the hall <laughs> that looks so familiar. <laughs> oh my God, it's Jackie Chan! <laughs> because they had used his Chinese name, oh. Sing Long. And I'm like, who the hell is Sing Long? Okay, yeah. fine. Oh, wow. And so I was like, hey man, you're Jackie Chan. He's like, oh, welcome to Hong Kong, you know? <laughs> so my first, the first person I ever worked with wow. was Jackie Chan. <laughs> And was that a commercial or a movie? Yes, it was a watch commercial. Oh, okay, yeah. wow. Yeah, I know. So that was how I got in the... And then I was offered a film contract with DNB, you know, and I remember thinking, I took the contract home, and I was thinking, now, what am I going to tell my parents? I'm supposed to be starting this ballet school, you know, this was the whole work that we had. I thought, wow. I mean, when you're 22, Right? <laughs> you go to Hong Kong and what an amazing city. Mm -hmm. And already have met Jackie Chan. And we're yeah. like, okay. And, and, and you know there were so many exciting things that could happen. And I didn't even think acting that I was so terrified of. I was like, yes. Uh, I gave the contract to my dad, who's a lawyer, who was a lawyer. And he looked at me and he <laughs> basically he said, this is like a slave contract, you know? Wow. <laughs> They're right with everything <laughs> and you're in the wrong. You ba and they basically tell you what to do <laughs> all the time. So then he made, then I said, so what do you think? He said, if you want to do it, you should. Really? Yeah. And my dad had always been like that. He has always been very supportive. So I've been very lucky to have grown up with uh, a, f a family when it's slightly not atypical of a Chinese family. I yeah. think it's different with my brother because, you know, you're the guy, you're going to be the breadwinner, in, and it's still very much in that sense. Mm -hmm. Since I was the girl and the more artistic one, okay, all right, just let her try and have fun with it. It's okay. So I got away with it easy, easier. And so he sent me off. What was, was sort of the attitude that you would try this, but then you'd eventually come back to ballet, or? Um, there was no talk of that. Yeah. He never said, oh, well, try it. He always knew that I knew that the home, the door home is always open, right? It's always there for us. But we must make a choice in what we wanted to do. Because he always said, I don't want to be, you know, the one that you blame for not having mm -hmm. done what you wanted. So he never really said to like, even my brother, you have to be a doctor or a lawyer or whatever it is. My job is to make sure that you have an education. But the cho uh, where you want to go from there is your choice. Because he is right, you have to live your life, right? Um, but you know, the very traditional Chinese family have always put the pressure on you have to do a professional job which is a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, an architect, you know, the, you know all that very serious thing. And my, my goddaughter, <laughs> I have to tell you this story. It was so funny. Um, and she, to she told it to me. It's a typical Chinese family. 
So, and she was a very talented drummer, pianist, and she could sing. And so she told her dad, and she was quite young at that, I, at that time, I think maybe eight or nine, right? And say, Dad, I want to be like a singer. So the father goes, uh-huh, okay. So after dinner, he takes her to, you know we have those um, night market? Oh yeah. Right, where you, you, you find people like telling fortunes mm -hmm. and selling weird things on the side streets and things like that. And there was a, gr a band of blind singers, like, la 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 bum bum. And he says, is that what you want to be, ah? <laughs> that oh. way he, he traumatized my yes. goddaughter so much. He was like, if you want to, that would be how you would end up. If you wow. think you would be a singer, because at that point, being a singer and actor was not, it was frowned upon. Let's be, let's be honest about it because they honestly didn't believe that you could make a real living mm -hmm. from that. So they would, he was trying to scare her so much that she would, and she did. I mean, oh, it she worked? She was like, oh, it worked. Uh. She became like an investment banker. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's yeah. not a bad thing, honestly. It's, it's not a bad yeah. thing. I mean, yeah, it's not a bad thing, but luckily she still plays the music now. That's great. Yeah, but at that, at that point, there were not a lot of parents who were very encouraging. You know, if your son, especially if your son says, you know, I want to be an actor, and you go, oh, no, yeah. <laughs> or a singer, you don't even know where to begin. Yeah. But to be fair, also in Malaysia, you really didn't, didn't know where to begin. Um, having one Miss Malaysia was not a ticket into, like, the film industry, whereas in Hong Kong it was much better because they had a much more matured film industry, uh, TV industry, whereas in Malaysia we were still fledglings, and even today we're still, you know, working at it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, going back to Jackie Chan, was the first movie you guys did together, Twinkle Twinkle, Lucky Stars? No. Or was there one before that? No, the first movie that we really, really did together was Super Cop. Oh, it was. So yeah. that was, because you briefly retired, didn't you? I did. When mm -hmm. I got married, I am one of those who just didn't, I thought, I don't know how to multitask, <laughs> to be honest. I am in awe of actresses who can have babies, amazing careers, and juggle it all together. And at that point, I felt, I did feel that, um, uh, that if you were traveling so much, because it was very important that we start the family, because we come, he, my husband was also a very traditional man, mm -hmm. and he really, re he didn't just want a kid, he won an empire. <laughs> 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 and there is just like no chance you can have a kid if you're, you know, off, if our paths didn't cross off yeah. enough. But, and I felt that, you know, that's what I always do is like when I do something, I must give it my 110%, like my devotion, my undivided attention, so that I can turn around and say, I truly gave it my best. And if it didn't work, it was for all the right reasons and not for the wrong reasons. Um, but God had it such that I couldn't even have a baby. Mm. So, you know, I mean, um, if I look at it now, maybe if I, you knew earlier on, it's much better in a sense because it would have been devastating 10, 15 years because I knew he wanted so many kids yeah. and you know, for, for me not to be able and no matter how much you love each other, one day down the road, you'd hate to look at that person and that person looks back at you and go, you know? So, um, so then I came back out and did Supercop. What a Supercop baby. was your, your first movie out, out of retirement? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's and amazing. it was really thanks to the uh, media, you know, because it's, it's tough in this business when you're always in the limelight and both of us were very known figures and all that and bless him and his family. We are still great friends and we, you know, his, his daughter is my goddaughter. So um, we have a great relationship and, and the media just turned around to me and said, you know, the, the buyers from the other countries are still waiting for you to come out with your next film. And this was like four years later. And you know how our industry, how quickly people forget, you know, if you haven't been in the, if, if for four years, yeah. you haven't been around, a lot of people would have taken you over your place and, you know, um, and they said, no, they are still waiting for you. So then I thought, oh, well, okay, why not? Wow, you know, that's revisit amazing. It. And I was very, very fortunate. The director, Stanley Tong, who did, he was a, a stunt man in m one of my earlier films, and we always, I always have a great relationship, rapport with them. And he said, one day when I get to be a director, 
I will co not come knocking on your door, and I promise you it will be a good movie that you will be pr proud to be part of. And he came to me with Jackie Chan wow. and Supercop. I was like, how do Great you say movie. no to that? Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, when I watched that, because we redubbed it many, a few years later. Oh, with your own voices? With our own voices. Oh, wow. Uh, because my voice is kind of recognizable. Right? Yeah. And I always fi <laughs> find it so strange when I speak perfect French and Italian and Spanish and go, wow, <laughs> I'm pretty amazing. But uh, <laughs> when we did the, the dubbing for uh, Supercop, uh, and I looked at some of the stunts, I remember some of the stunts that I did, I could have been seriously injured. Mm -hmm. It was, a, I, I, I felt the pain many years later. I was like, oh, wow, shoot, what were you thinking, woman? I'm glad you did it, and you're never ever going to do something so crazy again. You remember, I don't know if you've seen that film, but there's one, uh, it's the, well, the, actually the whole movie was just a crazy load of stunts. Yeah, it's a one long stunt. Yeah, until <laughs> one point Jackie got hold of me and said, can you stop it, please? And I'm like, what? He said, you do that. I did this like stunt from the motorcycle, and I jumped onto the moving train. And he said, when you do that, think what I have to do. I'm like, actually, that's very interesting because if he just did the same stunt, it'd be like, Jackie, are you becoming like wimpy? So he always has to be one up you. One up, yeah. right? So I thought, okay, that's fair. That's very, very fair. <laughs> but you know, when I looked at this and also when he was like rescuing me, coming with his little car and I was rolling off the van, like I say, we don't have rehearsals. We didn't know about that stunt until we get there. Right. So then they say, oh, okay, you're going to like roll off this van, hit the, the, the bonnet of the car Jackie is going to pull up on, and then it, you will just hold on. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds really easy, right? So then the rehearsal was, I would never forget this, they, they brought the van, and I'm standing on top of the van. So I looked, I literally, I'm like this, I look down, and so that's where Jackie's car would be. So I wouldn't figure like from there to here, six, seven foot drop, not so difficult, like I just, like a, a slight roll. Okay. <laughs> Action, right? Then the car, the van moves and you're standing on top going, okay, now it's all different. Yeah. <laughs> Whole dynamics is like, and there's like a 50 meters, you know, less than 100 meters to get that shot. Because, you know, we're in the shadows and, you know, they, we don't have the luxury of closing off the entire street. Right. You only have a section of it. So you have to catch it within that section. And if not, it's quite a turnaround to get all the way to the back, right? So I'm standing there and I'm going, I, this literally went through my head. I'm like, oh, what the heck? <laughs> because you never, you, you might as well shoot your rehearsal. Fundamentally, it was a rehearsal because that's the first time I'd ever done it. So you might as well shoot it. Just You never know, right? You could get it right. Oh my God, everything that could go wrong went wrong. So I land on the bonnet, the glass that was supposed to crack so that I could hold and Jackie could get me, did not crack, right? So I'm sliding off the car. Oh. And in the, the after, you know, Jackie always do, do these like, um, uh, where you can see all the bad shots that we've yeah. done. Oh yeah, yeah, he puts them in the movie. Right? Yeah. So then he, I can, s and I'm going like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like I'm, <laughs> there's nothing to hold on to because you know, it's a small little car and like you couldn't grab to the sides. And I could see him trying to scramble over and he barely sort of like, fortunate, I think that saved me too because he grabbed hold of one of my little sleeves, oh, really? my shoulder, and then I could see another, s and this is happening like in slow-mo. <laughs> right. <laughs> and there was another uh, stuntman who jumped off the truck uh, to try and get me. But can you imagine the speed we were going because when he landed, he just went straight back and he oh. had a concussion Ooh. straight to the hospital. So there I am sliding back, and people were just so stunned the way it was going. Nobody thought to say, cut, stop right. the cars. <laughs> we were still like, day, 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 going along. <laughs> and then the next thing I knew was I was so lucky. I landed on my butt instead of my head. Wow. Because if I slid off like that and went that way, that was the end of it. I'm only laughing now because you're okay. I'm only but laughing now because it's, it's <laughs> funny you think about it. Wow. So then I remember sitting like doom on the tarmac. And you know things, <laughs> I know now it's really funny. It's like, it was like a cartoon. And, and in the background I can hear Jackie because Jackie is very protective, 
first of me because I'm like a, his sister. Yeah. He's like, you're the one actress I never dated. And I'm like, we're really, really happy. <laughs> that never happened. That's why we are still such, we're like buddies, okay? <laughs> and so, and I can hear him going like, okay, cut, cut, finish for the day. Stop, no more, no more. Wrap up, wrap up. And so then Stanley Tong, who I've had like a very long friendship with, and we trained together. Even when the time when I was um, taking a hiatus, I would still work out with him, you know, oh, really? and so we continued our friendship. And so, and I was still <laughs> on the tarmac, right? Oh. And he just quietly knelt beside me and he said, what do you think? One more? <gasps> he knows me very well. And I go, yeah, right away. So we both get up and poor Jackie's like, what the? <laughs> has to get back in the car because he wasn't the director. <laughs> oh, man. And I said, no, let's go and do it now. Because the, what was, it was so fresh in my head, mm -hmm. what had just happened. If you go back and you think about it, you won't, be, you won't go up on that van yep. again. Right? Ever. And you can't bring out that feeling, what just happened, why and how I can make it better and make a change. If I felt that I couldn't physically do it, I would have stepped off and said, no. Cannot, it won't, even if I tried it, it won't, do, it won't happen. But at that point, and I would never forget, Stanley Tong is very soft-spoken. What do you think? And I'm like, now. So we turned the thing around, and we got it in the next take. Really? Was that the last take, I hope? You know what? You just did those two takes? Yeah, just okay, those good. two, <laughs> two <laughs> takes, yeah. Um, I know, when we were watching the, 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 you know, when we were doing it, and I was going, wow, woman, you are really crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> And then when we would do Q and A after the, the screening of the movie, and, and people would ask us, "Oh God, you know, I thought in Hong Kong you didn't have the budget to do green screens, you know, and all that." And Jackie and I looked at you did green screen. When did that happen? So they thought the entire train sequence, really? where the train was moving, that it was green screen. We were not. It the train was moving, and I wouldn't. I shudder to think what could have happened if wow. we just like Whoa. wow. I know. Uh, we have an actu actually have a question from a member of the audience, uh, Lorna. A uh, question for Michelle the Legend. Uh -huh. um, wants to know if you and Jackie Chan are going to work together in the future. We talked about it. Because <laughs> I was just uh, with him in China. He does this amazing action week. And I really appreciate um, how he brings all these unsung heroes forward to the foreground. Like, you never see the faces of the stun people. Right, but in that evening we celebrate them. We celebrate, you know, and you see who are the people that are who, who, who make us look good mm -hmm. on the screen. I mean, seriously. And we, we've been trying to find like the right you know, it's not easy to try and find the, yeah. the right right. Well wait, we haven't seen Eleanor's husband yet in Crazy <laughs> Rich Asians. <laughs> Oh God, does someone just say that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we'll t think of another film. <laughs> <laughs> Which is more fun for him. Yeah, 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 something where you can punch each other. Yeah, I yeah. think it would be fun. No, I think it would be really fun to do another one of those. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, we have a question about that for uh, Garrett. Um, wants to know, as a martial artist, do you still practice and do you still feel you can do your own stunts? Um, also, how do you deal with aches and pains when filming oh those stunts? <laughs> so I just finished um, a new movie has just come out that was uh, d that's directed by Master Yun Wo Ping, the amazing one. How who many did movies have you done with Matrix? him now? Matrix. Oh, I think three or four. Wow. And he called me and he said, you know, the uh, actor is from um, is a spin-off from Yip Man. So he was in. He won the best supporting actor in uh, the Grand Master that was done by Wong Kar Wai. So he's just like brooding, but amazed. And he was a stunned performer. And I fought with him in Crouching Tiger really? when he doubled Z. So I know how good he is. So this is, uh, and so I is with Dave Bautista. Oh, cool. Is with Tony Jaa. So you can hear all these like action. So it's an amazing action movie. And it's just uh, been screened in China. It's doing very well in China and in Hong Kong, in Southeast Asia. I hope that it will come here. It's called Master Z, the Yip Man legac Legacy. So I still practice, but I don't do a particular form of mm -hmm. martial arts. What I do is like I do all, like it's like, you know, if you know your ABCs, you can put your words and your sentences together. 
So what I do is I make sure I do my front, my back, my side, all the basic kicks and, all, and keep the cardiovascular in, in tone, in tune. Because um, I do Star Trek Discovery and we are quite yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> and we kick ass yeah. in that, in, on that TV, in that TV series. And it's always very, the first time when I did it, <coughs> I was going like, how come we have so many people here today? So people like Anthony Rapp, Mary Wiseman, and they're not on set today, but they said, we just wanted to come and see you fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get that. Yeah. Front row seat, right. I'd be there. Yeah, it was really funny. So, but it's such pressure, you know, it's like, oh, God, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't I'm not very good at this. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. So I, the good thing is I'm still very flexible and I keep, I stretch every day. That's very, I exercise every day. I do my martial arts practice, but not real martial arts. I don't do like a particular uh, form or anything like that, but I do um, keep the flexibility and the speed and the agility uh, intact, yeah. And uh, as someone who, you know, twisted their ankle 20 years ago and still feels it, um, <laughs> how do you deal with, with the aches and pains? Ah, you, you just... Mm, <laughs> I think, you know, you pay your dues. You did that and, and I've, we've, like Jackie and I and Jet, you know, we'll talk about it and we're hurt from like top to toe. And then we go, yeah, but look at the things that we did, yeah. it's okay. Um, so, you know when it's going to rain, your body tells you, <laughs> so. <laughs> if that's real, I always thought that was a myth, but that happens. No, it is real. Yeah. So you get good, good people, you know, masseuse, people who know, and you have to keep training your body. Mm -hmm. You have to, because it talks to you, and it's telling you, okay, you did all that, now it's time to say, I'm sorry, please forgive me, I love you, and thank <laughs> you, okay? So I do that too, I talk to my, I have pep talks with my body every day. <laughs> No, I'm not joking. I'm no, serious. I, yeah. I apologize to it every day. I say, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I do love you. <laughs> Seem to work. <laughs> so I think um, you were already a huge star um, internationally, but you really came to um, America's attention in 1997 when you were in the James Bond movie, Tomorrow Never Dies. Yes. Um, <laughs> had they been courting you for a while to do an English language film? The one, the person who actually put that idea in my head at that time uh, was Terence Chang. Uh, he's like, and we've been, we've known each other since the day of D&B when I first started to, to, to be in the industry where he was the, um, the publicity, he was the marketing manager. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we've grown up with each other. I've traveled with him to, to, to do publicity and all that. So we've gotten to know each other. And he was the producing partner at that time for John Woo. And when John first came to America, he didn't speak any English, uh, but because fortunately he had Terence, and Terence is uh, bilingual, so he was able to m navigate the, the, the place uh, for John. And I remember, at, and at this is the time when, uh, when I was doing like Super Cop and having mm -hmm. a great time in the Hong Kong film industry. And um, Terence called me up and he said, why don't you think about coming over to America, you know? Uh, and you're very, we were very spoiled in Hong Kong. If a director or a producer calls you up, you have the role. It's not like, oh, come really? in for an audition or read for us or whatever it is. Because the industry is not that big. Mm -hmm. And you know, they, it, was, it was very self-contained in, in that way. Um, so then I went, well, okay, how about if I come out when I was, I, was, I was skiing or something, and then I thought, all right, I'll come out and visit you and John, because they, we were good friends at, at that point. And, oh yes, and also because Jet Li was here and he was doing the lethal weapon. Oh, right. Things uh, at, that t at that point. So it was like a combination of things. And um, Terence would say, we'll arrange for you to meet and you know, hopefully find a good agent for you. And remember at this point, I didn't have an agent, I didn't have anyone. Luckily I had Terence Chang, who because of his connections, um, was able to set up some good meetings. And that was the meetings that I had for Tomorrow Never Dies, meeting the uh, producers for the Bond movies. And I remember throwing a pillow at him because he goes, you're not really our typical Bond girl, are you? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a fact, right? I mean, at that point, but and that's there was what sort made of her so great. Exactly. Yeah. 
I said, you know, when you find me, I don't play your typical Bond girl. You have to be, your, your whole persona and perception must have changed for Bond as well. I mean, he has to be very up to date mm -hmm. as well. Right, so it was, it was interesting times. And I remember when I first came out here, the American producers or filmmakers, a lot of producers or agents had no clue. Hong Kong, Malaysia, they, they figured, oh, Hong Kong, Japan, or no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> and you go, okay, this is going to be very interesting. And one of them said to me, you s your English is pretty good. And I go, yeah, it was a long flight. It was 12 hours, so I <laughs> learned your language. <laughs> I mean, I, mean I, I, I do believe at that point, not a lot of uh, Americans traveled out of the country. Mm -hmm. And especially, you know, and they were very insular. The market was the biggest in the world. So I only needed to really focus on this market and let everybody come to me right. in that way. So it was, it was a, a, a little bit of a culture shock because you know I've been making movies in Asia, in China, and then suddenly when I came to America, I was a minority and I go, what the heck is that? <laughs> you know, it didn't, because I, I come from Malaysia and we're a very multiracial uh, country, so we never think differences in, oh, you are this, so you must be, you should all sit over here and this and that. And, and so I grew up in a very um, diverse uh, environment. So it was, it was kind of interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard right. that you wanted, they wouldn't let you do your own stunts. You got to do your own fight scenes. No, 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 no. But no, they no. wouldn't let you? To be fair, to be fair. You know the insurance is a yes. killer here, right? And literally it was just like here to there, but it was, a, it was six, seven foot below. So they piled the mattresses <laughs> all the way to the top <laughs> so that we could walk across there. It was, but I understand um, that if your lead actor or your actor gets mm -hmm. hurt, can you imagine you know, the, uh, the production would have to shut down and all these kind of things. In Asia, Jet Li worked with a broken leg in, mm. in, in one of his earlier martial arts film. Um, when I did the Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, I had knee surgery after my first action sequence. So I was working with a brace until I was fit enough to do the final action sequence. The production never stopped. We just worked around us. You know, we would have our leg on a, on a wooden stool, and, but we'll still be doing this because <laughs> you, don't see my, you don't need to see my leg, right? You can see the, all the upper hand. And <laughs> so these, these guys were so used to like working yeah, with working it. Through so it. We, were not, we didn't have the luxury of that. And I remember Ang Lee, because he moved on to do um, Brokeback Mountain afterwards. Mm -hmm. And poor Michelle Williams, when they were doing their sledding, tore her ACL. We were like, oh God, Michelle and you and ACL, and not a good combination. And he turned around to her and said, yeah, but Michelle did an action sequence after that. Oh, no, why no. are you not? <laughs> <laughs> but that's so ang. That is so yeah. ang. Um, so Has Michelle Williams ever met you and said, hey, thanks for that? I know. Yeah. I think so <laughs> many girls afterwards come, out, come around and say, thank you for that. Like, yeah, you set the bar like this. Now what a, you know? Um, but in Tomorrow Never Dies, it, you know, it's such a big production. They cannot afford to have mm -hmm. any. And I totally respect and understand that. Because, um, you know, when we, when we did the action sequence in there, they brought, they were very good to me. They brought my son team and my son coordinator from Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And they would send them like mock up of the set. And, you know, these Hong Kong guys were like, is that really going to be the set? Because they'd never seen that. Because normally yeah. they only get to the set when they get to the set. Right. Right. So and you they had were sent, and they <laughs> had rehearsals. No, we didn't have rehearsals at that because we were already filming other things. Mm. So they they got there, and I remember, you know, because we were filming, and I see my son boys. They were in the green room, like half asleep, because it was like seven o'clock. And I guys, this is very bad reputation for our reputation. Get back to work. He goes, but we have already eight different s shots, and they filmed it on their own, like phone to show the director really? what they wanted because they're so like quick on their feet. So, you know, so it is, it, that's how uh, we are trained to work. And for example, when we did um, The Mummy with Jet Li and myself, where I played like the witch and he played the evil emperor. So they fixed this um, rehearsal time for us. And we walked in, we looked at each other, we chatted, and then we did the thing. And then we said, let's go. 
This was like 15 minutes later. So we left, right? <laughs> and then the director came in, where, where Rob Cohen, poor him. <laughs> I'm like, where's Jed and Michelle? They came, they learned, and they left. <laughs> 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 but like we're saying, it's because we, it's like when you write, if you're a journalist and you write a piece, right? You already know your ABCs. All you have mm -hmm. to know is the, the context, and you can just put it together. So for us, it's like we know our craft, right? They do it a lot better than I do, but it's easy for us to learn. Mm -hmm. But again, you're setting this, this bar for other people. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, I think it's because we came from that training, mm -hmm. right? So it's, and it's, luckily I had that training, so now it is easier for me. Sure. Right? With um, and you mentioned, obviously, Ang Lee and Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and um, I'm just so, it's just such a beautiful, such a perfect movie, honestly. And I've heard the rumor that you learned your, um, the Mandarin language phonetically? Yes. Wow. Because I don't speak Mandarin. Mm -hmm. um, I don't read it. So, and you know, it was very formal, classic that we had to learn. Um, yes, oh God. Oh my God. But I didn't feel so bad because Chow also had to learn. He spoke yes. Mandarin worse than I did. <laughs> <laughs> so we were both going like, oh, help us. And the worst was because Ang is such a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. Like every word, you know, to the last detail. And we were go, can't we do it in ADR, please? It's just that one word and not. Ang really? Like, no, he, he, it's like he's, you know, it's to be a director, to be a great director, that's the bit, that's the difference. It's like the nuances, knowing exactly what you want and keep relentlessly trying to get it. Uh, but for good reasons, obviously. Were you surprised by, um, not how successful the film was per se, but um, its lasting impact and internationally? I mean, it was, it was a huge hit here in America, won an Academy Award, won two Academy Awards actually, I think. Yeah. Um, that was Aang's first win. As director? No, no, sorry, no, not as director, I sorry. I think he did Sense and Sensibility. He won something before, no? He won for um, the other Tiger movie, Life of Pi. <laughs> but Life of Pi was later. Yes, I'm yeah. trying to remember. Oh, I, I love that film. Back. He won but for Brokeback, thank Brokeback you. But Brokeback was also later. Yes. It was after Crouching Tiger. And I remember going up to him and saying, what do you know about cowboys and <laughs> gay? He's like, man cheap, man cheap. I'm like, oh, and you are just so <laughs> gross. <laughs> <laughs> but it, you know, but it's a love story. Yeah. You know, more than anything else, that's where he is so brilliant at. Yep. If you look at it, it's the, in, in uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, there is only like three or two really big fight sequences. But the fight was not about the fight. It's the drama. Mm -hmm. It's the, in the motivation, the intention of it. And I think when it's like, I think when I look at Crazy Rich Asians, for example, when it's about family, it's about love, it's things that we relate to immediately we understand yeah. and it just feels good. Um, another movie you did that was based on a beloved property was Memoirs of a Geisha yes. for uh, uh, director Rob Marshall. Yeah. Um, he what was, was amazing to oh, work with. Yes. Uh, have you seen Mary Poppins Returns yet? No. He did a brilliant I'm job with it. <laughs> um, what was it like because that property was so beloved and mm -hmm. so popular. Was it exciting to sort of get to step into that? Oh my god, it was very exciting and I knew I wanted to be part of that. Yeah. I was very, I think Rob had it in his mind that I was his mameha. So I didn't, I didn't have an audition, I just had a meeting with them uh, and he was like, uh, he, at that point, it was a little worrying because all his main actresses were all Chinese. Mm. Uh, but then I also think, if I can only do roles that are written for Malaysian Chinese girl, that would be very few roles I can actually play. <laughs> so we have to be flexible as an Asian community to, to be able to you know, cross over because you know, with the Koreans, with the Japanese, with the, with the Chinese, we do have um, crossovers mm -hmm. and to be able to play each other. But of course, knowing how to do the nuances uh, properly. So that book, you know when you have such a beautiful book, in your head it's already so beautiful. How do you yeah. even make it more? And Rob Marshall with his team. And I rem will never forget when I had to go, M Mameha's apartment, of course, was like at the most prime location. And it was actually in the Okia, and we filmed. In fact, we had only two, maybe, scenes, uh, shots that were actually done in Japan. Mm -hmm. 
Everything else was film. That's the magic of filmmaking. <laughs> I can tell you all this. Uh, we filmed <laughs> in um, in LA, just outside of LA, where we built the entire mm. Okia. I mean, which Japan city is going to let you film now, yeah. post-war, and all those kind of different? You walk in one day, it's like birds are chirping, you know, and and Rob Marshall said, "Come and see your city." So he, he sat me down in Mameha's uh, apartment. He made me close my eyes. This is how serious it was. And he threw open the window. And when, you, when I looked out, it was like you were transported back in time to Japan. Mm. Because the detail, you know, I had that little bridge with the stream running. There was moss underneath the bridge. The attention to the nuances was just amazing. Mm. And I remember, you know, when I was, uh, it was me in under the umbrella and it was all covered with snow and just it was mind blowing wow. really was i mean that is that is why i love what we do so much because it's magical you know it's like one minute you're just you and next minute you are playing you're living lives of people that you can only imagine mm -hmm. And I've been very, very fortunate from a geisha to astronaut and now an emperor in space. I mean, <laughs> God, I don't know where else I'm going to go with all this. Um, you've worked with so many amazing directors. I've mentioned some of them. Um, you've mentioned some. Uh, there's also Danny you worked with Boyle. Danny Boyle. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, oh, my God. What a great. I will never forget the first experience I had. He had asked me to come in to, um, to, to speak about this new movie that he was doing, mm -hmm. uh, Sunshine. He had sent me the script. And he said, I would like you to think about the character, the captain of uh, the spaceship. It, it was written for a man. And, but he said, that doesn't matter. And that's what I love. It's like it, should, it doesn't matter whether it's written for a man or a wo woman, but you're regarded as an actor that can play the role. And I read it. And I went to him. I said, um, that's very interesting. Why, why are all your astronauts predominantly, except for me, Americans and Russians? Wouldn't the future be that would be more like whether it's Japanese or Chinese yeah. and <laughs> we would be much more integrated to be doing a United Federation kind of like, you know, to save the world that they would be part of it too. And I was very proud of that moment because I love working with directors or writers. Uh, Alex Garland was one who wrote the, yeah. the screenplay who listen, you know, the collaborators and they go, ding. Actually, you're right. So that changed completely. And I maybe at that point, I wasn't ready to play the captain yet. I wanted to play the, the botanist in there. So I asked for that role really? instead of the role of the captain. I think maybe I was just waiting to play the captain <laughs> in Star, Star Trek. Trek. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, I, that was the truth. Yeah. It was like he was saying, oh, you should play the captain. I go like, no. No, I think at this point in my career, I would like to explore something that's maybe a little more understated. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, is, because um, you know, that character, because her love for her garden and all mm -hmm. that, you know, the emotional ride was much more, I thought, uh, challenging as an actor. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, we had a wonderful time. Yeah. I mean, I remember when, you know, we, we would go for rehearsals and we had the best actors, like Killian Murphy, Rose Byrne. Chris, great. Um, yes, yeah. um, really. And he said, uh, Hiroyuki Sanada, uh, Benedict Wong. And he said, you know what? I need you guys to, you know, because you have been chosen for this. And as an astronaut, you have been chosen and selected very specifically. So you guys know each other so well. And when I put you in the room for the scenes, you must be able to have that body language that speaks that you've been together for a long time. So what he had arranged was for us to live in like for 10 days in a dormitory. No way. Yes way, <laughs> dormitory. <laughs> it was like the school holidays or something like that. And I walked into my room and go, you got to be kidding me, right? I mean, like, like the dormitory, right? Like literally you walk into, open the door, that's the bed and that's the, I think we had a communal bathroom. Whoa. Oh God. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and then he would stock our fridge uh, full, so that we had to live together. We had to eat together, like we were on the spaceship. Yeah. 
So I, me, I'm very honest. Like, if I cook, you will, somebody will die of food poisoning. So, <laughs> luckily, Hiroki was a good cook, and so you know, he we we sort of delegated him to do that. But it was nice, you know. We got to know each other. We they they would sing songs. We, you know, you you bonded like yeah. oh, at a campfire. But honest, after three days, we all went. I think it's time to go to the director and said, "We've bonded. <laughs> we know each other well. <laughs> time to go back yeah. to our apartments." <laughs> Who was but the messiest? I'm guessing Chris Evans. No, we <laughs> never saw each other's rooms. God, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we. It was a really, really fun. That's really cool. Group of people, and because he's Danny Boyle, yeah, you know, he's 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 got such a great way of. Explaining, he's got these big eyes, yeah, and yeah. big head, and he, he he's hysterical. He would tell his story like he had a, he has a twin. I and didn't know that. I know. Oh, really? He has so a twin know, brother. He has a twin, and he he would say, you know, my mom would be pushing us out in the in the the trolley, whatever pram, right? And the people would go, oh, how so adorable, and then say, take a look at me, go, whoa, big head. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, you know, how do you not love working yeah. with someone like that? That's amazing. <laughs> um, I want to jump ahead a little bit because I know we're, we're short on time, but um, obviously we have to talk about Crazy Rich Asians, which is... Uh, I hope you've all seen it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, is there anyone who, in the world who hasn't seen this movie? Um, it's based on the first in a series of novels by Kevin Kwan. Mm -hmm. Were you familiar with the books before yes. I, there was even a movie to talk about? Well, because it was an inter international bestseller. Yes. Right? Uh, it was one of those books that is funny and you could read very, very easily. And I got so many phone calls from my friends from Hong Kong and Malaysia and say, you got to read this book. It's really funny. Because we knew some of these people that they, he was talking about. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you, uh, Kevin will tell you. He said, I didn't invent or make up them. Some of them were really, really real, okay? And I said, <laughs> I actually recognize the ones that you're talking about, right? And it's important that my friends who knew who, who it was they were talking about were laughing. <laughs> and they were like, you know, it's, it's okay to laugh with each other. Like, you know, there are the stereotypes. And they don't care. Yes, yeah. I am flashy and I love it. So, blah. <laughs> <laughs> do you deal with it, right? Um, so, yes. I mean, when I read the book, he already had me at the prologue. Yo, uh, yeah. Eleanor Young, uh, she's a sassy, independent woman. And she uh, refuses to be sort of taken down a peg or what, whatever it is. She stood her grounds. But I love the way she did it, though. It was not like throwing a fit or a tantrum. That's very easy to do. But to do it s smartly, and I told John, it's like, I don't, Eleanor is not a character that would scream and shout. Because to demonstrate power, sometimes the silence speaks a lot more. Mm -hmm. And so we worked uh, on that very, very closely. Um, and Kevin was very kind and good uh, with, you know, the liberty of us taking his characters and making them more. Because the book, the book is fun. Yeah. But I remember my godson when he heard that I was making the movie and he said, please don't do it. I'm like, why? He says, she is so mean. Because <laughs> the, mother in the mother was written really. She's very mean in the book. Yeah, really, yeah. just downright mean. And I thought, that's very unfair because I know some of these mothers and they don't come across, they, they do that not because they are mean. And also, it takes away from the depth of the film. Right. I mean, if you didn't have that, what was what was Rachel fighting for? Mm -hmm. What was Rachel fighting against? You know, um, it's not about just Nick, but it gave the gravitas of the whole uh, perspective shifted. And also, we wanted Eleanor to you, to you to know Eleanor as you come along. Yes, when you meet her, she's like so regal, and everybody is just like Eleanor is here. Eleanor is here. Everybody's <laughs> like prim and proper. She sets very high bars, mm -hmm. not just for the people around her, but for herself because in she knows what she represents, not just herself, but the young family and what she has to do. But we added the nuances of where the mother-in-law still constantly reminds her. Mm -hmm. You're still not good enough. You still have to work better at it. And that gives her a side of the hum human, you know, a softer edge, whereas that's what she has to face. And what she was actually, in our minds, was trying to do to Constance, uh, Rachel, was to, are you sure you are strong yeah. enough? Y by when you marry into the family, 
I won't be the person who's against you. I will be on your side, right? But it's the rest of the people that you have to deal with. It's like, yeah, look at this Nick. It's all his fault. He yeah. just literally like dumps her out there and poor girl. Um, so there was so much in the, 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 the character and really such a great opportunity for the complexities of our culture and um, the American, Asian, around the world, uh, not just from America, but from England and all that, the, the, the difficulties that they mm -hmm. have um, and what we face when we are back home. I mean, I mean, I understand a lot more when my mom sent, or my parents sent me abroad to study and, you know, they lived in the fear that we wouldn't return home, that maybe we would enjoy being away from uh, living in England or America so much that that's where we stayed. And they always wanted us to return home. So the heartbreak of Eleanor when, you know, she's, she, she looks at her son and he asks her, do I, how do I look? And when she said perfect, the perfect came with heartbreak. Yeah. It was like, I know if I hold on too tight, I'm, in fact, you will go. And you never hold on to anything. You always have to open your hands because that's when they stay or not. But it is their choice. And I think in this film where it was so beautiful was like the w it was very empowering for the women, for the, the, the uh, Astrid character. Um, you know, I'm, I break into applause when she says, you know, you're the man. I, it's not my duty to make yeah. you feel like a man, yeah. right? And it wasn't her leaving him for another guy because Harry Shum came to do a character, Charlie, right. that's in the book. You see, right? And you see at the end. Yes, but we decide, and John and the producers decided, which was correct, was like, we don't want to leave the impression that she left knowing that there was another guy in the wing. Right. She left because she's a strong woman and she can take care of herself. Um, so, and all the different characters, and with, uh, with the two mothers and seeing um, Rachel at the end, it was like, I recognize her inner strength, her self-worth, was when she knew she couldn't make Nick Young choose, mm -hmm. because in the long run, it would destroy both sides, right? Because, you know, when you're in love, everything is lovey-dovey, but five years down the road, and, you know, family will always come first, mm -hmm. and should always, because what you want to do be, is to be part of that family. So we, it was a, a pretty incredible journey, I think, for, for all of us. It was incredible to see um, Asian actors from around the world come together and be given the opportunity to tell a contemporary story, uh, to be supported by the studios. And the last time we had a story like that was Joy Luck Club, mm. right? I mean. Steven Spielberg did remind me, no, 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 we had Memoirs of a Geisha, but it's true, Memoirs of a Geisha was all Asian cast, but it was set in a period Japan, mm -hmm. right? Like Slumdog Millionaire is an all Asian cast, but it's set in India. This one is very relatable because it's your friend next door yeah. who just so happens to be of Asian descent, and you travel with her to um, a place where her, her ancestors came from. So it was, it was nice to be able to be given that and the impact has been pretty tremendous because you know we have people coming up to us and I, I, at the beginning it was, I didn't realize how uh, powerful it was for the audience, for the little, the young girls to see themselves and say, hey, I am on the screen, I am accepted, I am not invisible, you know? And for them to come up and say, can I just give you a hug? At first you're like, Oh, oh, okay, yeah, come and hug. <laughs> now it's like, just bring it on. All right, I'm ready for you. <laughs> and it's, it's really, really gratifying. I mean, I've been in the business for over 30 years trying to push, you know, to, to break the envelope of trying to be... In, it's in only in the last few years where it's, we talk more about inclusivity, diversity, and all that. Uh, we cannot just be a token you know, just to make the rainbow color, you know, to be acceptable and all that. We accept there are stereotypes, but stereotypes also have dreams and aspirations and hopes, you know? So it has to be a full story. Mm -hmm. And in that way, then, we all get an equal opportunity. You know, we, we don't have to be treated special or different. We just want to, to have an equal opportunity where we all can work together, you know, and not be segregated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
this movie has such an amazing cast. There's mm. so many speaking roles, and every role is cast it's flawlessly. Important. Right. Uh, it oh, was John Chu yeah. went out of his way. He had a he, he did a call, cast call, on 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 the internet. I mean, he himself went on did. And then when all the different videos would come in, he watched every single one of them. Really, there was he, been he is a very devoted uh, director. He's he's going to be he's already great. Yeah. He's going to be really great. Well, I mean, I know the actor who plays your son, Henry Golding, <laughs> who's never done a film before. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and like, what the heck? The camera just loves him. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not just going to take on anybody to play my son. I mean, this is the first time I have a grown-up son, and he yeah. better be acceptable, right? <laughs> <laughs> like if I'm going down that path, he better. Oh, the worst was doing that scene where he takes off his shirt. It's like, hoo hoo, my God. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole other level to the There's story. There's a whole yeah. other level. That was the most challenging day. It was like, yes, I'm the mama. Yes, cool, nice. <laughs> 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 you see why she's jealous. <laughs> this was also one of Aquafina's first movies. No, she did Ocean's, Ocean's Eight. 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 Yes, right yes. before that, she is just. I didn't. Unfortunately, I had very little exchange ask. with them. But you do a great imitation of her. <laughs> I don't. I'm always like. <laughs> 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 you have to walk too. I know. Yeah. That <laughs> oh, no, she's just great. You know, it's like when Ken Jeong and her. Oh, I'm glad man. I wa wasn't in those scenes. Because it's like, oh God, this is like Saturday Night Live. Uh, like, I have a script, where are yours, guys? <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's wonderful to see these young actors. They're mm -hmm. all so brilliant. It's like Ronnie Chan, you know. They are just so brilliant. And I'm so happy that they're now given more opportunities to, yeah, she's doing Jumanji 3. Yeah. And Gemma, will, uh, Gemma Chan will be out in the Marvel uh, uh, Captain si Marvel. Uh, Captain Marvel, I think it com comes out in March. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris Pang just has an offer to do something else. So it's coming together. Yeah. And I'm so proud of them. I mean, I'm like the big, I, I'm like a, the mama on the set. I yeah. look at them with like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I have to step in also, you know, when they are have, they're having the, because the they are comedians and they are so quick and fast. I have to go in, okay, time out, time out, guys, enough. <laughs> It's good to be the, the, the matriarch yeah. of the family sometimes. I have a feeling they won't mess with you because you could kick their <laughs> ass too. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's good to have that reputation yeah. as well. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you can answer this, but we have a question from Steve. Um, the sequels to Crazy Rich Asians yeah. may be shot simultaneously. Have That's what the producers have said. Yeah. Uh, because they are saying, you know, when to get this group of people together, twice yeah. over another ex extensive pe period of time is not easy. Uh, so hopefully they're putting the two scripts, well, Kevin did write a trilogy. Right. So Warner Brothers was very smart. They acquired the trilogy. Um, and now they're working on the scripts two and three together. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Are you anxious to return to Eleanor? Some characters you want to leave behind, but she is so awesome. I would... Uh, I would not her. leave her behind. Yeah. I think that was the one character which I was very happy to say bye bye, but was Memoirs of a Geisha. Sure, it's a tough. Because Mameha was a, a tough, you know, to walk down her path and all that. So when I packed her last kimono, it was like, Do Mariato, I must I'm going to put you back in the cupboard. Uh, but with Eleanor, it's like, what? Those clothes, those jewelry, that look. Yes. Like, again, and you own the ring, right? Or the yes, ring is your, the emerald ring is yours? Yes, yes. Um, because when we, we, we sculpted Eleanor, Eleanor was not like randomly put together. Uh, because I knew, um, and I had, I had drawn inspirations from a lot of uh, people that I knew from Hong Kong and, and Crazy Rich in Singapore and all that. And they are always so coiffed and perfectly put together from the clothes that they wear, the jewelry, um, and they change all the time. You know, something always goes with another thing. So then when we were presented with the ring, which is so iconic in the film, it's, it's literally a character on its own, and it means so much. And we knew it would be very highlighted mm -hmm. as well. So we, we looked at the tray, and bless Mary, who our costume designer, she had put together like really big and expensive and jewelry. But you know how jewelry, they s have to speak to you, right? And if it doesn't speak to you, it's like wearing a dress. And if you look at it and go, don't buy it. 
you have to wear it and go, oh my God, I don't <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, right? It has to be like that because if you doubt, when you take it home and you put it on at home, you'll go like, uh, uh, because they have the perfect lighting in the store. Mm -hmm. So we looked at the rings, John looked at me and he goes, you don't like, right? I'm like, I know, no, 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 this is not, these, these are not Eleanor's style or her ring. So I said, trust me. And he said that to me when we first Skyped. Yeah. Trust me. And I go, okay. So I went back home and I, I had an inkling of what it was. So I got into my safe and I brought, I came, came to set when I was shooting that scene. They really didn't have a choice by then because we were shooting and we had to have the ring. And so I, s and Nina was like, oh my God, is it insured? You know, that's so typical yeah. of a producer, of right? Course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so that was how the ring got in, into the movie. So it's really your ring. I thought you just kept it from the set. No, Ooh, it was your, yeah, I did. Went, I did not think of that. When I it's saw like you <laughs> at the Golden Globes, I was like, oh, she kept the ring. That's great. That was actually yours to begin I with. I wish I could have known we could have done that, right? <laughs> Be in a movie and say, I'll keep that ring. <laughs> no, I kept it because it was my ring. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's even cooler. <laughs> um, before we go, I just want to talk about uh, some of the stuff you have that you can talk about coming up. I know that you are our February storyline online reader for oh, yes. SAG After Foundation. Oh, I love that. Yes. That yeah. is so beautiful. It's be really and fun. I hope that if any of you have a chance to participate, please do. It really is so special. And um, I don't know, what's the status on the spinoff of Star Trek Discovery? This is so impressive to me because your character died and now they're giving her a spinoff. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> don't worry. We're not recording this. You can tell us everything. <laughs> she didn't die. Oh, well. but wait. Uh, season two is just coming out next week. Oh, really? Oh, yes. wow. Okay. Yes, on the 17th. Uh, we have our premiere in New York. Unfortunately, I can't be there, but I am in it. I really am in it, and I'm spectacular in it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I have no doubt. I have to say, I I hug my righteous and Alex Kurtzman, and be, for thinking of this amazing character. I mean, when I appeared in um, season one mm -hmm. as Captain Philippa Jojo with my number one, Sonika, mwah, love her, uh, Martin Green, um, Michael Burnham. I mean, w I was like. Captain Philippa Jojo, what kind of a name is that? Right. But then we're way, way into the future where we are just one world and we do not have Chinese or Asian or whatever names. We all sort of like blend into each other and she is called Michael Burnham. So there we go. <laughs> and um, she was like the most beautiful, iconic, legendary hero of Starfleet. Kind, compassionate, the best leader anybody could follow. And when they pitched me the story, I was like, wow, okay, now I'm ready to play captain, okay? Yeah. During Sunshine, I was like, no, maybe not yet, but now I wanted to play. Then I went, are you gonna kill me off? <laughs> then they go, yes, 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 but, 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 but. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. If you're gonna kill me off, I don't wanna play. Oh, it'd be just like a token, right? It feels yeah. like then you're just a token and then you're like, bye bye. Then they go, no, 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 but then you come back. And I'm like, okay, well, it's science fiction. <laughs> Anything can happen. But how I came back as Emperor Philippa yes. Jojo Augustus Iaponia Centaurius, whoa. <laughs> My God, now that is a character that's so deliciously juicy and evil and everything else. Yeah. I mean, Eleanor Young, she's a baby <laughs> compared to Emperor Jojo. So it's like just this amazing character that came into season one. And then, of course, right at the end of season one, I, it's not a spoiler alert because I assume you all have seen it, <laughs> that she gets dragged back into the same time as mm -hmm. with, with, with Spock. Yep. I mean, yeah. she didn't, doesn't want to be here because, you know, as far as she's concerned, this universe is kind of lame, boring. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is she going to do with herself? Yeah. So it's been such a great and interesting journey, and we are going to have much more fun with oh. her. I cannot wait. I can't wait to see anything you do next. I want to thank you so much for oh, being here today. Thank you. Thank you guys thank for being here. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> thank you for being here. I mean, it's... It's so wonderful to be with people who understand the journeys that we all have to go through. Yeah. So thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. <laughs>